this episode, we investigate the threats facing manta rays. Discover how plastic trash is affecting these gentle giants. And meet the people dedicated to saving them. My name is Bertie. And this is Indonesia from below. As we know from our earlier episode, mantas are marvellous. With their inquisitive attitude, it's easy to connect with these intelligent elasmobranchs. But sadly, like many marine species, mantas are also under threat. Caught as bycatch or specifically targeted for their gill rakers for use in holistic Chinese medicine, Manta ray populations worldwide are thought to have declined by more than 30% in the last three generations alone. As a result, both oceanic and reef mantas are now listed as vulnerable by the IUCN. Thankfully, here on the island of Nusa Lembongan, there's a team dedicated to protecting manta rays. So Ellie, Thank you very much for joining us here on Indonesia from Below. If you could just start off by telling our viewers a little bit about who marine megafauna are. Basically what we do is we study large um, ocean giants. So um, animals like the manta rays, the largest ray, uh, whale sharks, um, the largest fish and the largest shark um, and other threatened marine species. Our goal is to basically save these ocean giants from extinction. Many of them are threatened species, but also raise awareness uh, for the issues that surround their threats and kind of encourage people to uh, live in harmony with nature. And what are your main areas of focus in Indonesia? Uh, MMF has projects um, in around the New Sipanina Marine Protected Area. This is why we've made uh, Limbong in our base. But we also have a satellite research center in Raja Ampat, and we're really excited to um, be hopefully expanding our research efforts to Indonesian Borneo area where there's another population of mantas and whale sharks. You get a lot of tourism here in Limbongan and it looks very sort of beautiful and idyllic from the outside but is plastics a major issue here? I believe so yeah for sure quite often with the monsoons we get a lot of trash um, you know washing up onto the beaches and finding its way into the feeding areas uh, for the mantas. In the last 10 years, we have produced more plastic than the whole of the last century. Staggeringly, 50% of all this plastic is used just once before being thrown away. This has had a catastrophic effect on our oceans. As our plastic gets washed into waterways, it eventually makes its way to the sea. Every year, millions of marine mammals die from entanglement or ingestion of our plastic trash. And mantas are no exception. Since plastic never truly biodegrades, it just breaks down into smaller pieces. Ellie is concerned about another threat to manta rays. Microplastics. So if I were just to pick up a random handful of sand, do you think that it would contain microplastics? I wouldn't be surprised, put it that way. Oh, I'm going to put this theory to the test. Aha, I see something suspicious in there already. Yep, you got some plastic foam there, that's for sure. Uh, and there could be others here as well um, that are not visible to the naked eye. That's something to bear in mind when you're strolling along these uh, beautiful white sandy beaches that actually what you're dipping your toes in is plastic. And also when you're swimming out into the, into the sea around here, a lot of the, the water might look clean, but actually they could actually be tiny little pieces of floating plastic. So what does all of this mean for manta rays? Okay, well, just think about it. If you're eating something that's undigestible, it could actually build up inside your gut, 
prevent you from absorbing your nutrients and getting the adequate nutrition that you need. Uh, or it could just pass through. And the thing about plastics is even if they pass through, is they're really great at adhering toxins that are out in the environment. So that when these little pieces of plastic are ingested by the animals, those toxins can then get transferred to the bodies of the animals. Um, so we know from other studies that these toxins um, can affect hormonal functions which could uh, affect reproduction, um, it could cause um, you know, uh, diseases uh, and other problems like cancer even. So this is not something that we want to see in an animal that's already vulnerable to extinction. It's clear that mantas are being hammered from all sides. Fishing, Chinese medicine, and now plastic. But for the mantas living around Bali, it's not all doom and gloom. To cheer myself up, I headed over to neighboring Nusa Penida with Blue Corner Dive. Beneath its steep cliffs is a famous site known as Manta Point. Here, tourists flock for one reason, to see mantas alive in the wild. When managed properly, tourism can be an incredibly useful tool to help protect manta rays. Divers and snorkers will travel from all over the world and pay a lot of money just to spend a few moments in the water with these graceful giants. And no matter how many times you see them, that feeling never wears off. Despite the many threats that mantas face today, all is not lost. Through the research conducted by the Marine Megafauna Foundation and the careful management of responsible manta tourism at hotspots such as Nusa Penida, there is a ray of hope for mantas worldwide. Yeah.